Hi guys and welcome back to Doc Off Call. My name is Dr. Maddie and I'm a doctor from the UK. Now in today's video we're going to be looking at a anime series that we haven't yet covered on this channel. It's called Hajime no Ippo and it's all about boxing. Now, the reason why I wanted to cover this anime is because there's so much medical science in boxing. Whether that's training for boxing, whether it's the injuries they sustain, or whether it's the recovery after a fight. And the great thing about this show is that it covers all of these aspects in great depth. And although it's not as popular as shows like Baki, Jojo, or Attack on Titan, it still has a great story and great character development. So it's definitely a show that I would recommend checking out. Now in future videos I hope to cover the journey of several of the characters from the show, but today we're specifically going to be looking at Takamura. We'll be taking a deep dive into his training and his weight cutting techniques, and then finally looking at his fight against Hawk. So if you're ready, let's begin. <laughs> So in this first scene we see that Takamura is starting his weight cutting and it looks as though he needs to drop 5 kilos before his fight with Hawk. So as a doctor I normally recommend patients to lose anywhere between 1 to 2 pounds a week. Now for Takamura that means he should look to lose this weight over 5 to 10 weeks. But there is a growing concern in the sports industry with people cutting extremes of weight in very short periods of time. Where you have fighters losing up to 20 pounds of their body weight in the last 48 hours before a weigh-in, and in some cases this has led to fatalities. And in this scene we can see that Takamura's power has diminished massively with him starting to deprive himself of nutrition. Now clearly an element of this is going to be due to him not eating as much. But the second reason is that once we go into starvation mode, our body actually begins to digest our reserves. Now this starts with digesting our internal fat reserves before moving on to digesting our own muscles, which is where we hold our power. <laughs> So at this stage it looks like Takamura has reached a plateau with his weight cutting and this is a really common problem that people face. What we find with people trying to lose weight is that they have an initial honeymoon period where fat seems to drop off them through dietary manipulation. But dieting only gets you so far before you reach this plateau. Now people rarely need to go beyond this plateau stage. It tends to be reserved for those people that are professional bodybuilders or top ranking athletes. And it's important to say that beyond this plateau stage, your body fat is really getting into the single digits in terms of percentage. And it's at this stage where you begin to burn the fat that's under your skin or what we call the subcutaneous fat, which makes the skin appear paper thin. And here is one of the techniques that Takamura is employing to cut further weight. He's using extreme levels of cardio. And this is a really effective technique to help burn off any excess fat, but also cut out any water weight you might be holding on to through sweating. And this is why he's dressed like it's the middle of winter. He's putting on several layers and a towel around his neck to help sweat it out. Interestingly though, once you get into very low levels of body fat, your body no longer has the ability to remain insulated and people often describe feeling excessively cold as a result. <laughs> And here again we're seeing Takamura trying to drain himself of as much fluid as possible by sucking on shiitake mushrooms. 
Now what he's doing here is drawing out any fluid in his saliva and spitting it out in an attempt to cut further weight. And I know that shiitake mushrooms aren't available everywhere, but as an alternative, people often do this with ice cubes. They chew on them and suck on them to draw out their saliva before spitting it all out. Nasty. <laughs> So again we have Takamura here pushing things to the extreme and his trainer telling him that pushing too hard can have the opposite effect on your training. What he means by this is what we were talking about earlier. Excessive training can lead you to break down your own muscular tissue and as a result lose some of your strength. And this is a really important point because no matter how hard it is to lose weight, it is equally as hard to put on muscle naturally. So sacrificing your hard-earned strength can go against you in future fights where the weight limit might be different. It's also important to mention that with overtraining, you increase your chances of muscular injury, such as sprains and tears. Now combining this with you depleting your fluid levels as well as your electrolytes, your chances of suffering from severe muscular Cramp, skyrocket. <laughs> and it looks like despite his best efforts, Takamura is still struggling to cut weight. Now, some of the more controversial methods of cutting weight, aside from cardio and dieting, are things like using hot baths and saunas. In fact, you get some crazy people doing exercise in saunas to help lose weight. Now, the reason why this is so dangerous is that combining it with fluid restriction can put you at risk of severe dehydration, which can ultimately lead to a loss of consciousness, seizures, renal failure, and death. Oh gosh, and as we can see here, he's really stripping things back to the bare essentials with his diet, having just this broth, and clearly it's not sufficient for his long-term health. I mean, if we just take a look at how the character is depicted, we can see how dehydrated he really is. Now, as a doctor, the way that we assess for dehydration is through a clinical examination, looking for specific features. For example, looking at the tongue to see if it's dry. You can also see other features such as sunken eyes and a reduced skin turga or skin flexibility. And as you can see, Takamura has all of these features in the way that he's been drawn. <laughs> <laughs> so Takamura is now out of saliva, he's just that deplete and dry. And it can clearly be seen if we were to compare what he looks like now compared to when he's on his off season. But to be this deplete, you'd really be worried about the loss of crucial electrolytes essential for normal body functioning, such as the beating of the heart or the sending of signals down nerve fibers. And agitation is a really commonly reported symptom from people who are trying to lose weight. Now, the reason this occurs is really twofold. The first of which is that you constantly are putting yourself into a hypoglycemic state, which is making you hangry, but also you're narrowing your repertoire of the activities that you're doing when your life revolves around losing weight. <laughs> And I think we can all relate to that feeling of being desperately thirsty, but did you know you actually have a thirst centre in your brain? And what this centre does is that it takes signals from various body parts such as your blood pressure, your mucous membranes, your vision and your hearing, and it helps to generate the sensation of thirst. For example, have you ever watched a Coca-Cola advert in the middle of summer and began to notice that your mouth is watering? That's your thirst center at play. 
全身の肉を落とした代わりに神経がむき出しになった感覚になってものすごく自分が研ぎ澄まされていくのが分かるんだ研ぎ澄まされる And this heightened sensitivity that they're talking about is due to your body going into a constant stress response in what we call the fight and flight response. Now, this defense mechanism is triggered when we push our bodies to the extreme. For example, imagine a tiger jumps out in front of you. This poses a threat to your body, and your body screams to survive. We subsequently heighten our senses, we raise our blood pressure, we start to sweat, and we run. In this situation with Takamura, the starvation is mimicking that of the tiger and thereby triggering your fight and flight response to survive. <laughs> and here we're seeing another very common side effect of this fight and flight response. That is insomnia. And this occurs due to the release of adrenaline when the body is under stress. Now, this surge in adrenaline prevents our muscles from relaxing and keeps us on high alert, which of course would prevent us from sleeping. <laughs> Takamura's fight to continue cutting weight continues. And I have to say that Hajime no Ippo has some of the best character development as well as montage scenes in any anime. In fact, I think it's such an underrated series, I would highly recommend it to any of you out there. And you know, sometimes I have to ask myself how boxers can muster that level of aggression to knock people out. But after you see the mental and physical stresses they put themselves in preparation of a fight, you can kind of understand why they might be a little angry. And in this next part of the video, we catch up with Takamura's fight with Hawk. Now, they've been battling out for four to five rounds already, with both of them almost reaching their limit. But what we find out is that in the fifth round, Takamura has run out of stamina and he's beginning to lose the fight. However, in what I can only describe as one of the best anime montages, Takamura finds his second wind. But what is the science behind the concept of a second wind? Well, some researchers theorize that your second wind, also known as a runner's high, may be caused by your body's release of pain relieving endorphins. However, that doesn't explain the whole thing. More commonly, that high is believed to happen as the body's systems come back into balance. Your respiration is regulated, your oxygen intake is fast, deep, and plenty, and your body is operating at a slightly elevated temperature, covering you in a light sweat. And again, I love how this scene has been depicted. Whereby Takamura has tapped into his second wind. If we just take a look at this animation, you can see that his body looks to be taking in more oxygen, and you can also see this mist forming around his body as it's operating at a slightly higher temperature. <laughs> And in this final scene here, you can see how Takamura has delivered a deadly combo with, a, with two punches to the liver, one to the temple, and one to the jaw. Now, the real danger with delivering a liver punch is that this force is transmitted through to the liver and to the liver's capsule. Now, the liver capsule is innervated by the main parasympathetic nerve, that being the vagus nerve. Now, when the power of the punch is transmitted to the vagus nerve, it causes the parasympathetic nervous system to go into shock. As a result, the body responds by dropping its blood pressure, the heart rate, your breathing rate, and this can often be enough to lead people to collapse. In addition to this, the danger of punching the liver directly is that you can cause a liver laceration, which can lead to internal bleeding and ultimately death. So, if you're gonna fight, make sure to protect your liver. 
Okay, well I hope you learnt something from today's video. It was certainly enjoyable for me to take a trip down memory lane with this anime. Now, as I said before, I'm looking to do a few more videos on this anime show. I'm hopefully going to take a deep dive on a few more of their popular characters. And if you have any recommendations of any fights within this anime that you'd like me to break down, or any particular aspect about boxing training, please do leave that down in the comments below. But otherwise, as always, if I could get you to give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.